All right, so uh, good afternoon, uh, Francis and Pops. Na, ne, lalakin ko sana si Pops, huwag nilang nakarecord ng pala tayo. But anyway, uh, thank you for joining me today. Uh, my apologies again for not being able to meet you. Uh, kayo, ba yung, kayo yung hindi ko na-meet last week, ano? Because um, merong curriculum committee meeting sa college and uh, I can't find a substitute. Tapos nagkamali pa ako ng tingin sa oras. So I think... I, I thought I can uh, go to Los Banos and then commute pa uwi, or better yet, dun na sana mag sa Los Banos. Uh, pero hindi pala, 3 to 5 pala yung schedule nila and I can't find a last minute uh, replacement. So, but I hope you you had fun watching the video recordings of uh, the the topics that uh, we left off from la oh, that we left from last time. Uh, if I remember it right, we did the, we discussed Euler's method, how it is derived. And then, um, tiningnan natin in a detailed fashion the analysis behind Euler's method, yung convergence, and yung global discretization error, and yung local truncation error, and how they affect the uh, overall quality of the solution. Because again, there are several things that are playing in a numerical process. Uh, meron kang basically two major sources of error that we need to be wary about. Number one is the theoretical error, which is basically the inherent uh, error that was uh, that was uh, obtained when you are deriving the methods themselves so kapag ka nagdesign ka Euler's method dinirive mo siya galing sa Taylor series expansion tinrunkate mo siya the uh, an upper bound for the truncated terms could serve as your upper bound for the error so ibig sabihin ito yung inherent or in nature na doon sa method itself and we cannot do anything about it except to uh, to to uh, to invent another method. And, uh, the other source of error is basically the machine error or the error due to machine precision or lack thereof. Ano? So kasi once pinagawa natin yung computation sa mga machines, nagtatrunkate kasi siya every part of the way. So ibig sabihin, uh, hindi natin nakukuha kung an hindi natin dapat i-expect na yung theoretical error lang yung ma-observe natin o ma-feel natin, ma-experience natin doon sa phenomenon. Kaya ang ginawa natin in Euler's method, I think our grandest theorem or result there is uh, the result telling us what is the global, uh, what is the total error due to theoretical, uh, to, due to the theoretical uh, derivation of the method itself, plus yung nangyayari sa machine precision. And again, I love the interaction we got, uh, we had last time when you're asking, kailan sir magkoconverge yung method, sir kailan, uh, Kailan, or ano dapat yung optimal age? I remember somebody, I think it was Francis, who asked that. And again, true enough, we got the formula for H, which is our upper bound for the error. And of course, that's the pessimistic bound. Yun yung worst case scenario. Laging sa numerical analysis, ang titignan nyo yung worst case scenario. What is the biggest possible error that I can incur? You don't look at the what's the best possible scenario. Sa numerical analysis, kinukuha natin yung error bound. What? Uh, how how wrong could we be? Para anticipate natin, kailangan ko ba i-adjust yung aking method and so on. So that's what we did. And then uh, supposedly last time we were about to talk about uh, Taylor's method. We're in, an, uh, we're in, it's an acceleration of Euler's method because Euler's method is an order one method. So the error vanishes as fast as how H approaches zero. Pero nakita natin, we can make it arbitrarily large or consider a method of order big O of H to the N by just keeping as many terms in the Taylor series expansion. So in theoretical error, which is due to the um, uh, local truncation error and the global discretization error, I pwede nating magawang magbehave, uh, commensurate or asymptotically uh, at par with the scalar multiple of H to the N. So arbitrarily, H to the N siya. So mas mabilis siya kaysa sa Euler. Pero again, there's no free lunch in the world. There, you should give up something to gain something. So yun yung ginawa natin na, ah, okay, ang kabayaran sa paghahangad or pag paggamit ng mas mataas na order ng isang, um, na, na isang method ay mas malaki yung computational expense na kailangan mong gastusin. Kasi nakita nyo, hopefully nakita nyo yung Taylor's uh, method, nagko-compute tayo ng mga total derivatives. As, re as replacement for the derivatives in the Taylor series expansion. At napakamahal ng proseso na yon. And uh, the, uh, the remedy that numerical analysts or numerical scientists found out 
pero, pero sabi ko na mathematicians found out ano ang ginawa natin naghanap tayo ng ibang method so kung mahal masyadong taylor's method okay siya mabilis na ko-converge yung 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 approximate natin sa true solution pero ang mahal ng computation expense so ang ginawa natin a ah, ang mahal kasi dito yung pagko-compute ng total derivative so bakit hindi na lang humanap ako ng approximation dun sa total derivative yun yung ginawa dun sa runge kata methods and I guess if you're just working with ordinary differential equations, the Runge Kata method is one of the go-to methods. You know? So you don't need to go fancy, but uh, I also gave you some additional videos that you can watch, which tackles uh, some multi-step methods, implicit and explicit, like the adams moulton and the adams bashford methods. So pero sa RK, actually RK4, RK45, or RK6, buhay na buhay ka na. So yun yung istorya ng ODEs. But one limitation of that method ay lagi lamang tayong nasa, nasa uh, first order derivative. Because if you remember, the form of the equations tackled in all of our discussions and the supplementary videos I showed you is you have a function x say of the variable t, tapos ito ay equals to f of tx. So may kita nyo yung right hand side, first order derivative lamang siya, tapos yung right hand side mo ay some function, hopefully getting some or, or having some desired characteristics. So ngayon, titignan natin ano kaya yung posibleng maging extension, all right, nung, uh, nung difference, and, uh, difference uh, schemes na yun, all right, na hindi lamang natin titignan yung, uh, yung um, paggamit ng isang point and so on. Paano kapag ka higher order na yung derivative, right? But actually, merong isang theoretical step that you can get away with the higher order method. Yun yung tinatawag na reduction of order. You can uh, you can think of an appropriate substitution so that ma reduce mo yung second order uh, differential equation into first order. Tapos pag first order na na siya, pwede ka na mag Euler or pwede ka na mag RK45, pwede ka na mag Adam smash fork and so on. So medyo may theoretical steps. So meron kang isang sa, alimbawa, second order method, kailangan mo maggawa ng substitution or you perform the appropriate substitution so that you get a first order method. Right, but you can play around that. I won't discuss how it is done because I think that's discussed in a um, ODE class. Uh, we discussed that in the math one five one last or two weeks ago. So I hope you you can see it. But think na natin a different flavor to uh, to solving uh, say a second order differential equation, and I will use this method as a springboard para makapunta tayo dun sa partial differential equations. All right. So, uh, but before I start the formal lecture, haba ng intro, ano? So, uh, ano yung ano? Uh, may napag, may in-announce na ba sila na method of assessment for this course? Though dapat ang tinatanong ko yung mga patinteach ko dito, ano? Pero how are the other uh, professors in this course evaluating you or assessing you? Nagpapaproblem set ba sila? Sir, lahat naman. Okay, problem sets then. So dadagdag pa ako, no? <laughs> so, Pwede yes, papad joke lang. <laughs> Papadalin ko na lang yun sa inyo, ano? So, but anyway, so para hindi masyadong mabigat. Because actually, when you talk about the numerical dif uh, numerical differential equations, ano, or numerical methods in solving differential equations, and dami ng ano, and dami ng packages na available. So it's really to find what's the best suited one for you, depending on the problem na given. Pero I think since this is a math course, kailangan nating ano? Kailangan nating tingnan ah uh, yung derivation, counting theory, para pag kayo na mismo yung magbabas or mag-aaral ng isang particular method na sa tingin nyo siya yung pinaka applicable sa inyong thesis or dissertation problem, then you can do it on your own. Okay? Nakikita ko medyo naglalag yung aking uh, share screen, so maybe I should turn off my camera. So para nakaon pa pala yung camera ko. So para um, sana mas mabilis ito. Okay, so uh, for today, we'll talk about finite difference methods. And finite difference methods, ay, ito yung nagiging replacement sa derivative. So meron tayong derivative, papalitan natin siya ng mga divided differences. We have already seen one kind of it. Actually, dito re, ito rin naman yung, or I think dito pwedeng i-classify yung Euler's method, yung Taylor's method na dinisgas natin last time. Uh, pero ang idea rito ay, igagamitin ko to 
para sa isang second order differential equation. And you will see that it has a natural extension when it comes to functions of several variables para makarating tayo sa partial differential equations. Now, this is not new. Uh, as early as 1768, ginagamit na to ni Euler. All right? uh, aside from the uh, classical Euler's method or along that way, uh, ginamit niya na to. 1768 siya nagsimula primitive Euler's method and then na-developed siya um, into several dimensions. And I think the next breakthrough was in 1908, parang founding anniversary ng UP. So when uh, Carl Runge uh, developed the two-dimensional version of the finite difference method, and then the a rapid development in the 1950s because people now, um, number one, gained a better understanding of differential equations. And we admitted that most natural and physical phenomena are modeled or aptly demonstrated or exhibited by partial differential equations. So kaya nagkaroon ng malaking, uh, malaking uh, boom, yung research area na PDE during that time. So let's consider a toy problem now para makita natin paano nag-work intuitively in finite difference method because I think rather than uh, give you the formulas themselves, depende kung anong function you're given and so on, it's better that we look at how these methods are derived, how they are developed, so that in the future, if you really need to devise a particular method on your own, kaya nyo siyang gawin, right? So let's look at this, uh, this toy problem. So let's consider... But I'll start with an ordinary differential equation for them. So let's consider this uh, boundary value problem, a second order boundary value problem. So let's say uh, we, I have negative u double prime of x plus c of x u of x equals f of x. Uh, say we have an interval uh, 0 to 1 here, right? And we have the boundary conditions u of 0 equals alpha and u of 1 equals beta. Okay, my only requirement here would be, uh, or tawagin natin uh, just for, para mamaya, madali yung notations ko, yung interval 0, 1, tatawagin ko siyang omega. Okay. So, siya yung uh, ating domain of consideration. So, basically, if this problem is posed unto you, it is just asking, find me a function u, such that negative u double prime of x plus c of x, c of x will be equal to f of x. Here, f of x is what we call the forcing term of the differential equation. The two guys, u of 0 equals alpha and u of 1 equals beta, are called the boundary conditions, precisely because ito yung, um, Ito yung, mga, ito yung mga equations na dapat masatisfy ng solution dun sa boundary ni omega. Si omega is 0, 1, so we need to give what's the condition for the for the solution at those two points, 0 and 1. Okay? So necessary to kasi in ODE or in, in elementary ODE, we learned that the order usually dictates the number of conditions or additional conditions, be it the Richley, be it Neumann conditions, so that you get a unique solution. Okay. Now, my only restriction here, so you can you can use this method for uh, any equation of this form, which is quite generic in nature. Zero nga lang yung first derivative, pero uh, you can uh, you can design uh, a finite difference scheme um, even if there's a u prime. So then you lang yung gagawin natin today. Now, the only condition here would be that uh, c and f are defined in the closure of omega. The closure of omega is just a close interval 0, 1. Okay. So closure and closed interval and an open interval, a closed interval, and that c is greater than or equal to 0, meaning the function value of c over the interval 0, 1 is always non-negative. All right. So these are my only uh, these are only my conditions so napaka generic dito it will work for any uh, any um, any any value of c the coefficient there and whatever forcing term you might have in mind uh, actually there's a special case uh, maybe i should mention that here from pde theory uh sa mga nag 252 jan or nag 152 before Probably you have seen this uh, result. So from PDE theory, 
or not PD, pero OD pa lang pala to. Uh, if C is a, a smooth function, or not just smooth, but uh, it is in L infinity of omega, all right? Uh, meaning it is a bounded function, right? So, uh, kung bounded yung function mo, and F is in L2, so square integrable dapat yung forcing term, then you exist. So you can find a, a solution to say, let's call this system one, right? Then a solution U, uh, let me rephrase that, then a solution U to one exists. Okay. Moreover, hindi lang doon natatapos yung established in ODE theory, if, uh, let me see, yeah, if uh, C is equal to zero, so if the uh, if this term here is um, vanishes, so you only have negative u double prime of x equals f of x, then we have a closed form for the solution. So if c is identically zero on the uh, closed interval zero one, then we have a formula for the solution. U of x is equal to the integral of g x y f of y dy plus alpha plus x times beta minus a, and the integration is to be carried over omega, right? So, ang tawag, nat, uh, ang tawag natin dito kay g. g is what we call the Green's function or the fundamental solution. Because it transforms the problem from solving the ordinary differential equation to just computing the integral of that Green's function against the forcing term. Okay. And then you have some added uh, terms here, but they are just what they are. Pang add lang sila. So the bulk of the work is computing this integral. Now, here, the Green's function actually is also known. See, g of x, y is equal to x times 1 minus y if y is greater than or equal to x, and y times 1 minus x if y is less than x. Uh, uh, we will not prove this. We'll just accept, uh, accept this as a fact, because it's not an ODE course. But this is important that we know that the result uh, at the back of our minds Para pagka nag-sample tayo, pag nagsulat tayo ng program or um, nagawa na natin yung, um, yung finite difference scheme na design natin siya, pwede natin siyang i-test para sa isang particular case ng equation 1 where C is identically 0. You can think of any function f that you like as long as it is L2, right? Makakuha ka ng isang solution U following this formula. So, mabibenchmark test natin yung ating solution o yung ating, uh, yung ating finite difference scheme. And I'm thinking, maybe, just maybe, this could be your problem set for this part of the course. Or at least the first part. Ano? Pag, uh, papagawin ko kayo ng example ng implementation netong finite difference method neto. All right? Oh, so you write an exposition or a written report about it. That would be part one of the problem set I'm thinking about. Tapos ngayon, mapapakamot kayo ng ulo. Ah, part 1 pa lang pala yun. So I'll have another one. Kasi gagawin ko yung isang OD at saka isang PDE. But I'll make them closely related and I'm willing to help you along the way. Ano? Kakusapin ko lang yung ibang instructors para baka pwedeng yung deadline ng pa-problem set ko ay sa last day na ng final exam. That would be fine with me. Para you have uh, enough time or some time to finish it. Kung papayag yung mga kasamahan ko. Ano? Pero I think they will, kasi ako naman yung mga problema pag check sa end ng cell. But essentially, that's uh, one formula that uh, you can think about when we uh, when you run or when you write your own code, implementing what we will be talking about today. Now, the motivation behind this problem or behind the uh, the uh, the uh, design of numerical schemes to find solutions to equations of the form equation one is the fact that uh, when C is not identically zero, 
there is no generic closed form formula. So, wala tayong mahanap na isang maganda or straightforward na formula like the equation that we have here if C is not identically zero. So, posible sa ibang mga kaso ng little f, halimbawa si little f ay zero, madali lang yung solution. Kasi kung si little f ay zero, this will be zero, this will be zero, so it's uh, u double prime equals zero. So, that means it will just be any, um, any function who's, uh, or any polynomial whose degree is uh, less than or equal to 2 will be a, a general solution. And then impose the boundary conditions, you will get the unique quadratic or linear function. So that's that easy. But if your forcing term is complicated, then there might not be a closed form formula, right? That's why, if that's the case, we jump to uh, finite difference methods, a, numer uh, a numerical scheme para mag approximate ng solution. Now, and that's a simplified case that C is a uh, C is a uh, actually hindi pala hmm, mali pala yung inisip ko kanina. Inisip ko ito ay magzi zero tapos si F. Yung condition ko nga pala na sinabi rito ay C not equal to zero. And that makes the computations even hard. Even if you say C of X is equal to the uh, constant function one, you'll have negative U double prime plus U of X equals F of X. That's still hard to solve for some forcing terms, little f, all right? Madali lang siya kapag ka yung forcing term mo ay zero, tapos kapag ka si c ay one, I think that could easily be computed. It's one of the sines or cosines kasi kakaroon ka lang ng second derivative ay equal sa sarili niya. Actually, e to the x is another solution for that one. So maraming posibleng solutions. Pero kapag ka arbitrary na si c at saka si f, then we cannot say about the ease of finding an explicit solution. It's why we turned our gaze into finding numerical solutions, okay? But as before, uh, as in any finite difference scheme, at the yung general steps. So let's do step number one. So we discretize omega. So kailangan natin hatiin yung ating uh, domain omega into a bunch of points. Because again, we are planning to do this or to implement our method in a computer. So kailangan hatiin natin yung ating uh, domain of consideration omega. In our case, our omega is the open interval 0 to 1. It's just a one-dimensional domain. So pipili ka lang dyan ng mga x sub i's. X sub. Usually, we, we, uh, we denote 0, the left endpoint, to be x sub 0, followed by x1, x2, x3, all the way until uh, x sub capital N. And the right endpoint is usually what we label as x sub N plus 1. So basically, it's up to you how to uh, how to do the indexing or the labeling. Pero ito yung usual kasi nga, hindi na naman natin kinocompute yung u of x sub 0 because that's already given. Hindi na rin natin kinocompute yung u of 1 because that's already given by the boundary conditions. So that's why it makes sense, or it is um, it is more convenient to label yung mga interior points from one to capital N. So we know that we will have capital N unknowns. Kasi nga, mangyayari rito, nag-approximate uh, nag tayo ng solution sa isang ODE, ang makukuha natin ay approximate, ang uh, tawag natin dito last time ay W sub 1, para kay U of X sub 1. We want an estimate w sub 2 for the function value at x sub 2 and so on. So we collect this w sub i into a vector. So if I have n plus, uh, how many? n plus 2 discretization points, kasi kasama si x sub 0 at saka si x sub n plus 1 sa bilang ko, I'll have n plus 2 discretization points that will give me n approx uh, a vector uh, over Rn or a vector over the, the, the field of complex numbers uh, raised to the n. Kasi nga magkakaroon ako ng isang n vector as my solution, okay? Uh, so that's our discretization. So, but usually we choose, uh, we choose the step size to be uniform just for ease of computation, but you, you don't need really to make h uh, uniform or the increment uniform among all of the h of the x sub i's. But again, if you can, why not simplify your lives and your computations make the value of the increment uniform? So in this particular case, we do have 
n plus two points, including x zero and compute uh, and including x sub n plus one. So these n plus two points divide our interval omega into n plus one intervals, right? So we have ng n plus one intervals. So ibig sabihin, our step size is, uh, which is the length of each of the sub intervals, would be basically it's b minus a over big n plus one. So this would be b, uh, but our b is one, a is zero. So this would be one over capital N plus one. So that's our increment for the steps. Uh, that's our step size or our increment for the discretization mesh. Theoretically, the more mesh you consider, the closer that mesh of points to omega. And we should expect, at least on theory, a very accurate solution or a more accurate solution. But again, we have seen this story before. Napanood na natin yung scene na yan, na hindi palagi na porket maliit si H ay maganda yung approximate. But we can talk more about that later. Uh, pero yung susunod, the step, ay i-initialize ko lamang yung mga boundary conditions. Or actually, siguro dito ay i-declare ko na yung mga variables ko. Ano? So here, from step number one, we know that uh, x sub j, the j at partition point or j at discretization point will be equal to j times h. Kasi nasa interval 0, 1 lang tayo. So just remember, kahit minsan, I try to generalize everything here. Pero at the back of our minds, we are living in the interval 0 to 1 lamang. If your interval is not 0 to 1, kailangan yung baguhin yung formula kay x sub j. All right? So don't, don't, fall into that trap. Ganto lang ka simple lahat. Pinili ko lang yung interval 0 to 1 para maganda yung itsura ng mga kinocompute ko like h, maganda yung pagkocompute ng x sub j's and so on and so on. Okay? Now, um so that would be it and then I will introduce the following variables. Katulad din dati yung u of x sub j ay isulat lang natin na u sub j. All right, and what else? Ah, you, so that means, in particular, we'll have u sub zero would be alpha, and u sub n plus one will be equal to beta, the boundary conditions, right? Because I say I u of x sub zero from the boundary condition that's alpha, then this u sub n plus one is actually u of x sub n plus one. And according to the boundary condition, it's equal to beta, okay? And then the goal here, which is step number three, form a linear system that will give us the vector u, or let's say that will yield a vector I'm thinking about a good notation here. Uh, siguro, let's call it uh, what? Uh, huh. ah, let me just call it here. U upper H. It's a vector. So, medyo, medyo may abuse of notation ako rito. Yung U ginagamit ko minsan as a vector. Minsan siya yung function U. But I hope everything will be clear in context. So, si U upper H siya yung vector. Naglalaman ng U sub 1, U sub 2, U sub 3 until u sub n. Pero ito, ito transpose ko para maging column vector siya, ipoporma ko na siya kasi ang idea ko mamaya magkaroon ng system of equation, of linear equations that will give us this vector u, upper h. Kasi kailangan ko yung upper h para clear na depende ito sa step size. Right? And uh, this would be in r to the n. Uh, R to the upper n, not upper n, R to the capital n rather. Okay. So, how will we design such a system na magbibigay sa akin ng vector u upper h? Ang gagawin ko lang, replace all derivatives in one by a known numerical differentiation formula. So I hope in your undergrad uh, numerical analysis courses, you were introduced to a, 
uh, several ways on how to approximate the derivative, be it the first or higher order derivatives of a function f, right? <coughs> Sorry. So, ang given ka lamang ng isang ODE, lahat ng mga ODE, uh, lahat ng mga, ng mga derivatives dun sa ODE ay papalitan mo lamang ng finite difference approximation para sa kanila. And hence, the name finite difference for our method. Okay? Kasi nga, lahat ng derivatives ito pinapalitan natin ng mga divided differences. And usually, divided differences are also called finite differences. Okay? So that's uh, basically the idea. And then you just organize and assemble all the pieces of your equation into one big linear system. And then hope and pray that the linear system will have a unique solution. And again, also a stable solution. So may papasok na ngayon na isa pang, uh, isa pang isipin sa atin. Number one, dahil ang, in the end, ang sabi rito, magkakaroon tayo ng linear system. So we are praying that that matrix is invertible. Or you can compute it pseudo inverse or uh, at saka dapat stable. Mababa yung condition number ng matrix A because once we ask computers to solve a huge system of linear equations for us via matrix inversion, medyo kailangan nung magduda ng konti dun sa solution because the higher the condition number of your matrix A, the, uh, the less accurate the solutions become. So, hindi lang pala accuracy nagsuffer, pati stability. A blow up in the right-hand side, which usually happens because, uh, uh, not a blow up, but a simple perturbation of the right-hand side, which is very much prone, okay? Prone na prone dyan yung, uh, yung machine implementation ng mga methods, magkukos mag, mag, uh, yun ng pag-blow up ng error, okay? So kaya medyo kailangan konting ingat sa finite difference method. That's why in my research, we tried as much as possible to go away from finite difference methods. Kasi nga yung mga, inti, yung mga functions na pinaglalaroan namin, they do have singularities. So uh, nagbablow up sila minsan, uh, nagiging improper yung integral and so on, nagiging weakly singular. So we really need to be extra careful. And it doesn't matter how careful we are sometimes. Nag, uh, may artifact pa rin nung singularity na nakaka-apekto dun sa quality ng aming solution. So that's why if we will have time next week, I'll try to also introduce some integral approaches to differential equations. But that's for later. So let's go back to equation one and try to do step number four. So uh, let's do, let's recall equation one. Let me just go back here. Copy paste ko lang yung equation one. Oh, by the way, I forgot to introduce another notation here. Uh -huh. Also, I want to denote C of xj to be equal to C sub j. All right. Kasi nga, nag evaluate nga rin pala tayo ng function C. Ito yung nasa coefficient ng function u doon sa equation 1. So just for uh, to, to make the equation shorter. Ano? Okay, so recall. Mm -hmm. Ito yung equation 1. Sulat ko lang siya dito para madali ko siyang maalala. So, we have this equation and luckily for us, we only have one derivative. Second order nga siya, pero it doesn't matter. It's a single derivative. So, the uh, transformation of this uh, transformation of this uh, ODE into a finite difference equation should be simple. All right? Kasi nga, nakapag-decide na tayo sino yung mga exabytes na gagamitin natin. So that means we'll just plug those in into this, use them in finding the or in replacing the derivatives, then we should be good, right? So the approach is here. You can select any method that you can uh, that you can think of or that you have encountered. Then the approximate sa u double prime for the second derivative. So it could be a three-point forward formula, a three-point backward formula, a, a four-point uh, forward backward formula or a three point centered formula so it's up to you just uh, look at the finite difference solutions or approximations to u double prime in particular i will use this approximation that u double prime of x uh let's call this uh, u double prime of x sub j halimbawa which is u sub j this is approximately equal 
to u sub j plus one minus two u sub j plus u sub j minus one all over h squared. This is from uh, elementary numerical analysis. If you remember, this is what we call the three point centered formula of order two. It's three points, because uh, the function values are used. It is centered uh, because we use one step forward, one step backward, and then divided by h squared. Uh, the order here, it's an order two method. So if you want to make it exactly equal to the derivative value, then mag add ka dyan ng big O of h squared. Now, I see something in the chat. Wala po bang condition for you? Like baka it should be continuous or so long as it's a function. Well, by design, uh, mamaya pa ako magbibigay ng conditions dyan dun sa solution. All right. Kasi ngayon, ano muna? Kasi pag nagsabi na ako ng condition, kasi si u yung function na hinahanap natin. So, ayoko muna maging picky on what solutions I can get because I first, I don't know what conditions I have, all right? Or kung meron ba akong solution na makukuha. So, yun yung problema ko dito. Kaya ayoko munang sabihin na or ilimit yung sarili ko na dito lang ako pipili ng solution sa mga function u na ganito yung itsura, okay? So, but there are some elementary um, conditions that you can say. Well, meron kang u double prime, so dapat ibig sabihin yung u double prime at least ay nag exist So kung si u double prime ay nag exist so meaning u prime is differentiable, so that means differentiability implies continuity, so that means u prime is uh, continuous, all right? At tapos si u prime ay nag exist so si u prime nag exist so dapat si u ay differentiable, si u ay differentiable, so ibig sabihin si u ay continuous. So you're right, any solution that we'll get here is continuous. Basi pa lamang dun sa uh, the very existence of a u double prime guarantees that u is a continuous function. But I don't know if that continuous function uh, belongs to a special class or a special space of functions, all right? Uh, yun muna yung ayoko munang isipin ngayon. Ano? So malaki muna yung universe natin. Pipili muna ako sa mga, pipili muna ako dun sa mga kahit anong function yun, all right? Uh, of course, with continuity, because that's inherently uh, in the problem. Dapat nandun siya talaga. Dapat continuous siya. Right? Uh, but this formula will work as long as uh, your function is twice differentiable. All right? So this, uh, this numerical uh, differentiation formula will hold. And then I'll use this formula as a replacement to u double prime at each of the points x sub j in our discretization mesh. Right? So that's why we will have the following equation. So equation one becomes this. I have negative u sub j plus one minus two u sub j plus u sub j minus one all over h squared plus cj uj equals f sub j. Nagdag ko na pala dapat sa notation ko yung f sub j. Pero dito ko na lang muna siya isusulat where f of x sub j is equal to fj, all right? So, yun yung ibig sabihin neto. Okay? Lagay ko na lang siya dyan. Uh, notes na lang natin, all right? So, para lang ma-exit. And then, remember, c sub j is basically c of x sub j, all right? So, really, what I just did here is I plugged in all of the x sub j's into the governing differential equation and replaced u double prime by the second order central difference formula, okay? And this should be true for all j starting from one until capital N, right? By the way, when I write something like this, j equals one comma N, tapos my bar or my overline, that means j goes from one to capital N. So I will have N such equations. Na dapat yan ay totoo. And then I'll have additional conditions that u sub zero is equal to alpha and u sub n plus one is equal to beta, our boundary conditions, all right? Now, the problem is, uh, or the next step, but the next step 
is to organize this into a matrix system. Okay? So basically, kailangan nyo lang tingnan ano yung pattern, paano ko nakuha yung, uh, paano ko ma-organize into, into a matrix system. And I want this to be extendable pag pinalit ko si H. Dapat yung madiderive kong pattern mag-work kapag ka lumalaki yung capital N. Kasi pag lumalaki si capital N, ibig sabihin mas dumarami yung points na ginagamit mo, ibig sabihin dumiliit yung step size. Lumiliit yung step size, lumalaki yung matrix system na kailangan nating isolve. Alright? So, I usually do it this way. Tinitingnan ko muna yung mga special cases, yung mga maliliit na cases, and then I try to see what's the pattern. Can I organize them into a nice matrix? Ano? So, siguro, let's do some scratch work here first. Okay. So, uh, kunin ko muna yung case when, yung una-una. Uh, oh, hindi ko pala, yung, ah, tama, yung una-una, j equals zero. So, when j is equal to, ah, sorry, j equals one. If j is equal to 1, then we'll have negative u sub 2. Ah, sorry. Amaya ko na ilalagay yung negative. So u sub 2 minus u sub 1 plus u sub 0 all over h squared. May negative sa unahan. Plus c1 u1 equals f sub 1. Okay. So gusto ko tong isulat into a matrix system. So uh, what I'll do is to transfer all known constants to one side if there are known constants, right? Oh, but look at this. I have u sub zero. We already know u sub zero, so u sub zero can go to the right hand side because I want only the u sub i's, i going from one to j or one to capital N to be the variables in the left hand side, right? So itong u sub zero over h squared times negative one, Ililipat ko dun sa kabila. So that's the plan. And what? Oh, I will combine this U1 and that U1 together. Right? So that means the first equation that we get of for the system is this. I'll have negative U2 over H squared plus 2U1 over H squared the C1 U1, and then, oh, I can factor out the U1 here. Factor out ko na lang yung U1, okay? Tapos ito ay equal kay F1, and then I'll have plus U sub 0 over H squared, okay? So that's the first equation. Tama ba? Mm. I hope tama yung pagkaka-algebra pagkaka ko, ano? Or you can replace u sub zero by alpha because we already know that that's the constant value. All good? So, ito yung unang equation. So, ibig sabihin, pag ginanda ko yung malaking matrix, so, anda natin yung malaking matrix, dapat kasi ang itsura niya ay ganito, u1, u2, kasi sila yung mga unknowns, tapos equal to sa so something, sa so right-hand side of constants. Well, the first equation, the equation when j is equal to 1 is this. I need to organize it for the first row. Okay? So, wala akong problema sa right-hand side. Ito mismo, ilalagay ko dun sa loob ng right-hand side. Okay? So, you see that? I'll just put that there. Yun yung unang entry. But how do I get to f1 plus alpha over h squared? I need to organize the left-hand side into this matrix. Well, Yung unang entry sa first row, kapag ka pinerform ko yung matrix multiplication, remember this row gets multiplied by the column. So the first entry here is the multiplier to U1. You go back to your system, what's multiplied to U1? So you have 2 over H squared plus C1. Tapos, second entry here would be the multiplier to U2. So yung multiplier sa U2? Oh, it's negative U2 over H squared or C negative 1 over H squared. And then you have 0 all the way to uh, the last column. Right. Huwag ko lang siya ng konti para magkaroon ng mas maraming space. Okay? Tapos, itingnan ko ngayon. Uh, kasi, syempre, isa pa lang. Wala pa akong pattern na makukuha dyan. When J is equal to 2, we get what? When j is equal to 2, we get um, 
negative u3 minus 2u2 plus u1 all over h squared plus c2 u2 equals f2. Okay? Tapos, so f2 lang yung right hand side kasi dito lahat ito ay may mga unknowns u, uj's na. So f2 will just be the sole entry here. And unfortunately, that tells you, ah, walang pattern tong, or wala akong pattern na madidudus sa first two rows. Kasi halos magkaiba actually yung kanilang right hand side, magkaiba yung forma. So leave ko lang yan muna. But here, what is multiplied to u1? Well, what's multiplied to u1? Uh, I have one, I have u1, my negative sa labas over h squared. Wala nang u1 dito, so I should have a negative 1 over h squared there. Then what's multiplied to u2? So I'll have negative by negative, so that's positive. 2u2 over h squared plus c2 u2. So that's going to be 2 over h squared plus c2. And then ano yun na mo multiply kay u3? Kay u3, ano mo multiply negative u3, uh, negative 1 over h squared. So that would be our entry here. Tapos 0 na siya sa lahat. And then you do this for j equals 3, and then a pattern will emerge. That here, I will have 1 over h squared. I'll have a 2 over h squared plus c2. Then I'll have negative 1 over h squared, 0 there. And then I'll have an f3 here. And then dito na lang siguro, second to the last row. Kasi mahirap siyang isulat. Uh, ito yung n minus first row. Okay. So, dun sa n minus uh, first row, puro zeros, except dun sa last two entries. So, the uh, last two entries would be what? So, ibig sabihin, kakaroon na ako ng negative, uh, actually, last three entries pala. Negative 1 over h squared. Tapos yung diagonal entry niya ay 2 over h squared plus c sub n minus 1. Tapos negative 1 over h squared ulit. Yan yung entry dito. Okay. Tapos ang right hand side niya f sub n minus 1 lamang. Right? And then in the nth row, the last row in this uh, equation, ay puro zeros. Pwede nyo siyang gawin. Kung matsaga kayo later, gawin nyo j equals n. Ano yung mangyayari? Ano yung maging itsura? And you try to fit that in into this big matrix that I am assembling. All right. So makita nyo na magkakalaman lang ay yung n minus first column at ang laman niya ay negative 1 over h squared. Tapos yung diagonal entry niya na nasa nth row n column ay 2 over h squared plus c sub n. Tapos ang right hand side niya ay f sub n plus beta over h squared. And this would be the system that you need to solve. So, sulat ko lang siya ng medyo mas maayos ng konti para pagka binalikan nyo tong notes na to. Though I'm thinking, uh, nagtitake notes ba kayo? Or kailangan ko magsulat ng uh, exposition about this? Ano sa tingin nyo mas okay? Okay na ba tong recording na lang? Or gusto nyo magbideo okay. sa inyo ng handle? Pero welcome na welcome din sa lang handle. <laughs> <laughs> Akala ko makakaligtas na ako eh. Paasa ka, Pops. <laughs> Choke lang. Sige, sige. I'll try to write something down. Okay. So, pero does the assembly of the matrix make sense? Or magulo ba yung pagkakasulat? Rewrite ko lang siya saglit. Tapos, uh, tanongin nyo ako. So, essentially, ang mangyayari, yung matrix A, tatawagin kong matrix A, itong coefficient matrix, isa siyang tri-diagonal uh, matrix na diagonal entries niya ay lahat 2 over H squared the C sub N, or C sub J. So sa so first row yan, second diagonal entry, 2 over H squared plus C2, then 2 over H squared plus C3, all the way until 2 over H squared plus C sub N minus 1, tapos 2 over H squared plus C sub N. So tawagin ko tong matrix A. Tapos, yung off-diagonal entries niya, top and bottom, ay negative 1 over h squared. 
negative one over h squared, negative one over h squared. So here, negative one over h squared. Here, I'll have uh, negative one over h squared, negative one over h squared, all the way until here, and all the way until here. And then zero elsewhere. Yan yung coefficient matrix capital A natin. And it depends on the variable uh, on the step size H. So let's call this. I'm still thinking what's the best uh, what's the best notation para sa, para sa H. How do I denote A to be a function of H? Perhaps uh, sige na, A upper H na lang muna. So I think matrix uh, regard uh, dependent on the value of H. Uh, the value of H uh, gives us the value of capital N because they are related via the relation H equals 1 over N plus 1. So when H is increased, mababawasan si N, si capital N. So ibig sabihin, liliit yung matrix. Kapag ka pinaliit nyo si H, lalaki si, uh, pag, pina, pag pinalaki nyo si N, liliit si H, lalaki yung matrix. So ganun yung interplay between A and H. Now, yung right-hand side, tawagin natin siyang B. Um, siya ay F sub 1 plus alpha over H squared. Then F2, F3, F4 until F sub N minus 1. Tapos F sub N plus beta over H squared. And you will notice that all of these are constants. Why are they constants? Kasi... Ipa-plug-in mo lang yung mga x sub j's papunta dun sa forcing term. Of course, the forcing term is given in your problem. So really, the only variables here are the u sub j's or the u sub i's are approximate for the function values of the uh, the unknown fun unknown solution u at the discretization points. Okay. All right. Uh, any questions uh, so far before we proceed? Okay lang ba yan? Do you see yourself uh, doing this uh, for a particular ODE? Kaya nyo i-assemble yung matrix kasi it, it's just uh, actually patience lang. Ano. Pag nakapili ka ng numerical differentiation scheme, plug-in mo siya dun sa, yung OD, uh, dun sa yung ODE, then arrange your terms nicely, you're gonna get a nice, neat uh, matrix system like what we have, right? Okay, I'll take your silence as no questions, so I'll proceed. So just uh, for analysis, I will split the matrix A into, say, two pieces. Kasi, uh, ang nagpagulo lang naman dito yung C sub I. Eh. Otherwise, ang ganda ng itsura ng matrix natin. U over H, uh, yung diagonal entry supposedly ay 2 over H squared. Tapos yung off diagonal entries lahat ay negative 1 over N squared. So basically, I will let, just for brevity of solution of notation, A sub S to be 1 over H squared times the matrix 2, 2, 2, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1 there. So tridiagonal matrix, main diagonal consists of all twos. The two main off diagonals consist of all negative ones times one over h squared. Okay, so yun yung tatawagin kong a sub s. Tapos yung remainder, tatawagin kong a sub c. Which is basically a diagonal matrix consisting of the function values for the, the coefficient function c of x in our uh, differential equation. So thus, the matrix system, let's call this matrix system three. Okay. So three has the compact form. Yung compact ito ay English adjective, hindi siya mathematical adjective. So has the compact form. Actually, hindi pala compact form, no? Expanded form pa to. Because I split or I will split. Uh, I will split the matrix A into two parts. So I'll have A sub S plus A sub C times the unknown vector U. Let's call it U upper H. 
equals the right hand side B. Of course, the right hand side B also depends on the size of uh, the, the step size H, pero hindi naman siya magma-matter dun sa analysis. Okay? Now, with this in mind, uh, the next question is, meron bang solution lagi ito? Or yung base system natin, yung equation 3 natin na A, U upper H equals B, meron ba yung solution? Can we find a column vector UH or U upper H that belongs to uh, uh, R to the upper N na magsasolve na tong linear system na to? Well, if A is a square matrix, and in our case it is because uh, um, kung ano yung number of rows, yung din yung number of columns. So the question is, uh, or the, the goal is, or the yeah, question na lang, is A invertible? So that's the quick question. Because if A is invertible, ano yung implication nun? If A is invertible, we will get a unique solution to system 3. Because if that's the case, then U upper H is simply A inverse times B. Tapos yung boxing. Yun lang yung solution natin or para dun sa finite difference equation, which will be our estimate for the solution of the uh, ordinary differential equation. Now, to, uh, to, to conclude, all right, or to know that this matrix is invertible, I will need the following theorem. Uh, kailangan kong ipakita na si A ay may isang napakagandang property that it is symmetric positive definite because probably um, I can I can uh, put a recall bullet here that a symmetric positive definite matrix is invertible. Okay. Now I will bank on this uh, on this uh, result. So because mapapakita natin mamaya through some straightforward calculations that the matrix A that we have is symmetric positive definite. At kapag kasha is symmetric positive definite, automatically by this fact from linear algebra, yung ating matrix A as I invertible. Okay. Now another recall bullet here. A matrix uh, A. The being yung size niya, halimbawa siya ay n by n, is symmetric positive definite or SPD if and only if V transpose A V is greater than or equal to zero, uh, sorry, is greater than zero for all vectors for all non-zero vectors v na siya ay nakay r to the n then all right so this is the uh, definition of being symmetric positive definite so basically our problem of the invertibility of the coefficient matrix capital a is now reduced by the string of this previous results uh, to showing that this inequality holds true, which is a necessary condition or is a sufficient condition for A being symmetric positive definite. Okay, And that would be my theorem here, my first theorem for today. Uh, here, kakailanganin ko yung condition na si C I always non-negative all throughout the interval omega. Then A, is symmetric positive definite. Then let's try to write a proof. Dahil hindi makukompleto ang isang math uh, course kung hindi man ako magbibigay na kahit isang proof. Ano? So let me just do this. But this is really computational in nature. So uh, proof, proof, proof. Okay. Uh, the idea here is uh, first we observe uh, it is clear that A is symmetric. At yung sabi niya, ang daya ni sir, pwede siyang magsabi na A is, uh, na it is clear that A is symmetric. Pero pag kami nagsulat na, bibigyan niya ng deductions. <laughs> Pero yeah, 
but it's really obvious, right? Look at ju just look at the A. It it screams it's uh, it's uh, symmetric. Wala namang malaking talaga namang clear ano. Baka minus ang ko pa kayo pag meron pa kayong komplikadong proof diyan na siya ay symmetric kasi tititigan lang natin symmetric talaga siya. So you can write that it's obvious that uh, the matrix A is symmetric. So what remains to be shown is that it is symmetric uh, that it is positive definite. And for positive definiteness, if such a word exists, ano, so I consider ako ng isang vector v. So let v, v uh, be a vector v1, v2, until vn transpose. Okay. Then let's compute v transpose av. Or by the way, before I do that, uh, oh, hindi ko na pala kailangan kasi alam ko yung itsura nung, mga, nung laman ni matrix A. Let's just remember that matrix A has the following itsura. Ano? So ito yung itsura ni matrix A. Try diagonal siya. Na ang, um, uh, actually wait, kailangan ko pa tong, hmm. Yeah, yan yung itsura ni capital A, pero I can capitalize with the splitting that I did earlier. I forgot uh, totally about that. Ngayon ko lang siya naalala kasi <laughs> mahirap yung computation pag kinompute ko basta-basta si V transpose uh, AV using this form, but it would be easier if I will note that this can be written as V transpose AS plus AC B. And then by distributive, uh, distributive, by distributivity, I don't know, this distributive kasi, uh, matrix vector multiplication over addition. So I can write it as V transpose ASV plus V transpose ACV, right? Pero ano ba si AC? Si AC ay isang diagonal matrix. So kapag ka meron kang diagonal matrix, nagkakaroon ka lamang ng constant multipliers dun sa harap ng mga uh, vectors na pinangmumultiply mo. So essentially, if you, are, uh, if you are patient enough to perform this calculation, you will say that that is simply, uh, this is simply uh, summation, or actually, wag mo summation, equal yan sa, Actually, kailangan ko na pala talaga ng summation. Sorry. Summation ng C sub... Uh, what subscript should I use? C sub i na lang. Tapos V sub i squared. I going from 1 to capital N. Okay? So that would be the, uh, the expansion of this guy. So just be patient. Perform the multiplication by hand, you will see na ganito lang yung magiging itsura nung second term, right? And so, this means this number is greater than or equals a V transpose ASV, right? Kasi nga, itong V transpose, oops, itong V transpose ASV, dinagdagan mo pa ng, ng non-negative addend. So that means this alone is smaller than the entire thing. Kasi ito ay positive with, uh, since V sub i is greater than or equal to zero for all i. Maybe I should note that. Since dito papasok yung condition na yung function C natin ay non-negative. Okay? So now, we really need just to show that uh, uh, V transpose A S is symmetric, uh, is positive definite. Dito na, dito ako kailangan maging careful pag ko compute. But again, if you're careful enough in performing the matrix multiplication here, so gawin mo lang yung V1, V2, until Vn, times yung matrix AS, which is what? Our matrix AS is, uh, is uh, tri-diagonal, right? So yan ay 2, 2, 2, Two, negative one, negative one, negative one, negative one. Okay. Tapos may over h squared salabas times 
the column vector B1 until Vn, carry out that multiplication, and you will get this. Paki verify na lang, pero I think this is 1 over h squared times V1 squared plus V2 minus V1 squared plus until V sub n minus 1 minus Vn squared plus V sub n squared. Inompute ko na yan kanina. And what can we say about this guy? Well, the V sub i's are all, are all the terms here are non-negative, right? Kasi naka-square sila, so they are at least zero. So essentially, I know that this is non-negative. So essentially, what we have shown here is that V transpose AV is greater than or equal to zero. So siya na ngayon ay positive, uh, siya na ay positive semi-definite. Kasi nga, yung V transpose AV ay greater than or equal to zero. But the question here is, get, gusto ko mapakita na siya ay greater than zero para sa lahat ng non-zero vectors V. Ito yung condition para sa pagiging positive uh, definite. Right? Uh, pero napakita pa lang natin siya ay positive semi-definite. Right? So, para ngayon mapakita, let's, uh, let's investigate what will happen if V transpose ASV is equal to zero. Well, manggiging equal lamang yan kay zero kung itong mga to lahat ay zero. Alright? Pero kailan magiging zero tong sum na to? Well, magzi-zero lang yan kapag ka what? Uh, maybe dahil wala na kong oras and I know some of you have classes, kindly verify that this will be zero if and only if the V sub i's are all equal to zero. Okay? Gagawin nyo lang naman, expand nyo to, expand nyo to, binomial expansion lamang, tapos second power pa lang, so magiging trinomial yan, trinomial yan, kunin nyo yung sum, tapos expand nyo siya in terms of the V sub i's, and essentially you will see that that will mean that all of the V sub i's will be equal to zero. So that means this product, this guy, V transpose, AS times V will be zero, or if that is zero, then V is equal to zero. Okay. So essentially what we're saying here is that V transpose AS V is equal to zero only if V is equal to zero. When V is a non-zero vector, then this will not be equal to zero. In fact, that will be greater than or equal to zero. So therefore we can conclude that V transpose AV will be greater than zero for all V in Rn or R capital N minus the zero vector. Okay, so therefore A is symmetric positive definite. Tapos ang corollary nito, A is invertible. That is equation three has a unique solution. And that solution is u upper h equals a inverse times b. All right. So probably the problem set that I'll give you with respect to uh, the ordinary differential equation part of this, uh, this course is for you to think of a function c that is non-negative and a forcing term capital F. So iba-iba kayo niyan, kayo yung pipili, ano yung little f nyo, Basta si little f dapat ay, uh, anong yung condition kay little f? Si little f dapat ay uh, L2 function, right? So, make up your own function f that is L2. And then, um, your non-zero function little c, right? Or non-negative function little c. Your alpha and your beta, you're gonna get a uh, um, an exemplar of equation number one. And then, Ang gagawin nyo, ipa-perform nyo itong inversion procedure na to. Tapos pakita nyo sa akin ano yung itsura ng solution. It will be great if you will have a, um, if you will, uh, if you will also compute the uh, the actual solution, alright? Para meron kayong comparison ng relative errors. 
But uh, wait until I draft the uh, actual problem set, right? Para dun sa part na yon. The first item in my problem set would be this guy. Kailangan nyo lang to implement. Okay? Now, I don't want to keep you over time because I know some of you will have classes after this. Tama nga ba? May klase yung iba sa inyo, no? So, hindi ko kayo pwedeng singilin ng ano. Dahil uh, late kaya kayo. So, hmm, tayo yung oras ko. <laughs> so, so uh, babawi na lang next time. Ano? So, uh, next time, hopefully, makapagsimula tayo ng maaga. Tapos, uh, makontinue natin yung, uh, yung lecture for today. Because I prepared what? Uh, a six-page lecture. Nakadalawa pa lang tayo ngayon. Pero, uh, yeah. I think that's it. Uh, you guys, do you guys have any questions? So, i-modify ko na lang yung next, le uh, next lecture. I-contextualize ko na rin siya pati sa PDEs para mas efficient yung discussion natin. Kasi yung error analysis or yung convergence analysis nitong finite difference method natin in one dimension, or I mean in one variable, is a special case nung, uh, nung error analysis or convergence analysis para sa finite difference methods in multiple dimensions. So, ipapresent ko yung theory of the error and the convergence in general para mag-work na siya sa PDE. Tapos pag na-present ko na siya, na-discuss natin, then we'll tackle a specific PDE, which is the uh, the heat diffusion equation. Tapos papakita natin ano yung itsura ng mga solution using a finite difference approach. Okay? So, sakto, 5.30. So, uh, since there are no questions, thank you guys for joining me. Unfortunately, hindi pa na fortunately. Masaya tayo kasi on December 8 ay holiday, pero it's a, it's a pain for us because we cannot meet. So let's just meet on Tuesday again next week, all right? Bye, guys. Bye, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir.